Bognar back and today I want to talk about some GMing or DMing or however it is. Um, the actor in me loves to play role-playing games especially if he's DMing or GMing because he gets to play all the characters that aren't player characters. I mean don't, don't get me wrong when I'm a player, I also like to play a character, but I get to play one character. And sometimes that one character is enough because I do it to my satisfaction. But, you know, all of a sudden, you know, when you're behind the screen, it's... You're the cast. They're the heroes. You're the rest of the cast. You're the world. You know, you know how, you know the deal. So, you got to kind of bring something to it, you know. You can sit there and read dialogue. You can read description. You know, the text boxes. You come into a room, there's a bed, there's a chest of drawers, there's a writing desk with a piece of paper on the side. That's boring as hell. And also, I try not to read the text verbatim. Um, even when I don't get a chance, because usually when I'm DMing, I want to read over all the descriptive text in the module or whatever I wrote beforehand just so I can get the feel of it as part of the actor thing you know like having a script and going through it um, but with even when I don't do that I try to find the pertinent information I'm, I've got kind of good at scanning getting the pertinent information I have to get across to the players um, and try and put it in my own words or should I say my the characters words I mean, yes, the character is on the page here, but you're the one who has to, you are the one who has to bring him to life. So, even if you're just doing a narrator job, like you're walking into a room, it, you know, like I said, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you open the door. It swings easily. You find yourself in a bedroom that's seen better days. Like the rest of this mansion, it's old. It smells musty. There's a four-poster bed in the corner. There's also a chest of drawers, which looks like it hadn't been used in years. It's all kind of dried out. And an old, old desk with an old, old piece of parchment on there. And a pen lying on, its, on the paper. There's something scribbled on here. You pick it up and you read it. Well, I shouldn't say you pick it up, you read it. Then they say, I go over and pick it up and I read it. Well, it's an old cramped style of, of uh, writing. But you can make out a few. It's in, in other, another language. It's in Elvish. But you can make out a few words. Well, I hand it to my elf. You read it fine. It tells a sad, sad tale about a woman who was jilted by a former lover. Blah, 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 blah. That's the kind of thing you have to do. And as far as playing characters... You know, they'll tell you right off the bat. If you don't write it, they'll tell you in the module or whatever you write off the bat what the character's about, um, why he's doing it. And don't forget the what they call in acting. Um, I can't remember. Son of a gun. But it's what the character wants. Because every character wants something. Every, even in plays, in movies, in role-playing games, every character wants something. They have a purpose, and that's what you have to get across, especially if that character is the one setting up the adventure. For instance, in my 50 Fathom Savage Worlds book, we have a, excuse me, we have a character here. Um, there's a Senator Rayson in one of the... Uh, in one of the, the uh, adventures, who has his daughter who's been kidnapped. And he re greets them cordially. You can go on and just read, My daughter Rain is something of a feisty child and has spoken ill of the Emperor in public. Captain Livis, the new garrison commander, overheard her latest outburst and threatened to send her in chains to Kara unless she married him. Of course, she refused, but I had no choice to protect, but to protect her from Jan's sadism, so I consented to the marriage. Now you can read that, you can just straight on read that to the players and they're going to go, okay, whatever. This is how I do it. Senator Rayson, I get some kind of idea beforehand, to read it beforehand. I know what the information I'm trying to get across is. So it comes out like this. My daughter, Reina, and he's well-bred. My daughter, Reina, something of a feisty child and often spoken ill of 
the Emperor in public. Now, Captain Levis, he was the garrison commander over here, he overheard her latest outburst, and he was going to put her in chains unless she married him. Well, being my child, of course she refused, but I had no choice. I, I had to protect her from Jane's sadism, so I consented to the marriage. I tried to convince him to change his mind once he cooled down, but he refused. I'm going on. Now, I admit, okay, my actions were foolish. I understand that. Now, if you want to kidnap my daughter and take her to one of the free towns, that would be very, uh, I, could, I could see that. I could be very well disposed to help you in a small way. Now, she'll be safe after tonight. I have a small chest of approximately 800 gold doubloons to start a new life. You must believe this is real. Telling the truth she, tell her nothing of the truth until she's well away, and I will offer a family heirloom that's been in our family for years. So, so you kind of ad lib, but you got the information there, and you did it in character. And this encourages players to be in character also, which to me gives a richer role-playing experience. Um, I've got another character in here that is totally different, totally different. There's this outcast, approaches this one group in a bar, and he offers to sell them a treasure map and this golden triangle. Now, of course, okay, yeah, we're in a bar, a guy comes in, he wants to know if we could buy a treasure map, blah, 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 blah. But this is how you make it interesting. Okay, they say he's a Kahana outcast. Kahana is one of the races in 50 Fathoms. Um, and most of them are outcasts. They're kind of fish people. And so... I think about it, I look at it, okay, he's an outcast, let's see, how long has he been an outcast? I'm saying he's going to be an outcast for quite a while, so he knows how, he would know how to approach strangers like this. So, and he's very, very, very well um, spoken. He knows how to convince people. He's very good at this. He knows how to talk people up. So, he comes out like this. This is... This is from the this is from the, the dialogue, so I'm just going to take it here. This is no ordinary treasure map, he explains. The map points to the buried treasure of Redbeard Rufus. Yes, Redbeard was one of the first warriors of Cobbitus, arriving not long after the flood. The natives hadn't encountered many pirates before, and Redbeard amassed a fortune in treasure. A fortune before the Karen fleet sank the ship. Before he died, Redbeard made a vow never to rest in peace until his treasure was returned to him. I worked for a captain by the name of Abdullah, cruel Barbary pirate. Uh, after he had me flogged for something I didn't even remember, I jumped ship. But not before I stole his map and his triangle. But I do now. I think they're related somehow. I don't have the ship, but I do have the map. I don't have a ship, but I do have the map. Let me join your crew. I'll take an eagle share and I'll give you the map. What do you say? Mm -hmm. So that's the way you do it. So you might want to think about the NPCs. Give them a bit of a background. You don't have to do much. And, you know, go forth and do it that way. And I'm sure your role-playing experiences and your GMing would be a lot better. If I could elaborate on this on future episodes, I will. But until then... Keep gaming. Bye-bye.